Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one. Hey, we are back. Welcome to Friday, June the 19th. Julie and I are doing a very drilled down podcast. Part one was yesterday. Part two is today. We are talking about, of course, how to find the impossible to find homes for sale. Um, And what we're doing is we're giving you a very drilled down list of places you can go to find out about all the homes for sale other than the MLS. And as the point we made yesterday, and hopefully a lot of you were receiving it as intended, if your only solution to find homes for sale is going to the MLS, you're never going to succeed in this new market. So there are zillions of houses for sale, despite the fact that every headline is saying there's no homes for sale. You just are not looking in the right place. So go back and listen to the podcast from yesterday and then obviously listen to the podcast um, from today and then get ready to take notes and we will get all of this done together and you guys then will have a good sense of direction of where to find inventory for your homes for sale. Um, Now a quick reminder, uh, if you have not yet uh, grabbed your free copy or essentially your free subscription to our uh, the coaching program that we came out, which again, third time, is free. It is a scaled back, you know, maybe 10% of our normal coaching program, but it is a great place for all of you guys to get started. Um, we created this coaching program right when the pandemic started because we wanted to do or offer something that every single one of you could benefit from. The free coaching program um, is available for you right now. All you have to do is text the word survival to 31996. Text the word survival to 31996. And when you do, we're going to text you back a link that you can go and join the free coaching program. Do this urgently. Um, One of the first, well, frankly, the first two things we want you to grab hold of is the 90-day massive action plan. The 90-day massive action plan is exactly what you should be doing every single day for the next 90 days. And guess what? When the 90-day massive action plan, when you've completed the first 90 days, then do it again (laughs) and then make it the 180-day massive action plan. The moral of the story is a lot of you are still taking too long to get back into action. You have, I don't know, quarantine fatigue maybe. The perfect way for you to move past that feeling of malaise is get into massive action. So go ahead and text the word survival to 31996. Do that right now. And like I said, you can join the free coaching program. And uh, yeah, and thank you for all of you who have been sending us so many emails and texts and just being so, uh, you know, appreciative of what we've been doing for you during this time of uh, stress and change. And and guys, listen, the reason that we're doing this podcast is because we read your emails. We pay attention to what you say. We know a lot of you are, you know, struggling to find inventory for sale. And I'm here to tell you, and hopefully we're doing a good job convincing you, there's no shortage of inventory for sale. There's actually just a shortage of agents knowing where to look for it. So Julie has, I think, got four more really valid points yes. ready. So make sure you're taking notes. That's right. So if you missed the first uh, 10 or 11 points, some of those are our favorites. So make sure that you get caught up, Real Estate Coaching Radio, and we're going to just pick up where we left off. So last we were talking about how to find inventory. We mentioned for rent by owners, these are individual investors with the, who are advertising their phone number, one of the easiest scripts. So that was the last thing we talked about. Moving on to point number 11, REO listing agents. Now, here's the thing. There is not a ton of REO uh, real estate owned or foreclosed on properties for sale right now. In fact, this is something that's coming up. I think this is partially motivated by our listeners and our coaching clients being bombarded with crazy emails promising to sign them up so they can instantly have access to asset managers. But in fact, the total uh, list percent of listing inventory in the country right now is less than 1%. You mean distressed? Distressed. Right. Okay. So that's be- uh, most of the time I see between 0.4 and 0.8 of the market. That's virtually nothing. But let's be clear about that. That is the market today Correct. when you have mortgage forbearances, when you have basically unemployed people that's getting it. enhanced unemployment, when you have essentially people as self-employed and business owners getting PPP and EIDL loans, people are still able to make their payments. Thank God. Truthfully, we're thrilled about that. As libertarian as we profess to be in this particular crisis, we are all for the government bailouts. 
And if you've not yet grabbed your government bailout, by the way, if you are listening to us for the first time, even as a self-employed, uh, you know, independent contractor agent, you probably are eligible for one of these government lifelines. So uh, we have also included that with a free coaching program. Just go ahead and text the word survival to 31996. But as far as the REO distressed property, in our opinions, based on what we're seeing, unless these government bailouts last until next year, which they may, honestly, who knows, right? We have no, you know, crystal balls, no clearer than yours, but they could. But if they don't, then you're going to start seeing a lot of distressed real estate come around. And we are getting a lot of emails, a lot of calls from our old contacts in the distressed market. A lot of you guys know us because we're the first uh, coaching company to come out with a nationwide short sale program and then an REO program. We are we are right at the very pointy end of the, the spear back when the distressed market was really rolling out. And so many of you benefited from that market. And when that comes around again, trust me when I tell you, we are going to be the first to give you the cr most credible information about how you can make the most of that market. That's right. So yes, there are a few REO listings around. It's good for you to know or good for you to be an REO listing agent, but this is not for now going to be a huge segment of the market. However, one of the things that we do uh, monitor so that you can see what's coming is the pre-foreclosures. We talked about that on yesterday's podcast. There's easy ways for you to monitor the pre-foreclosure activity in your market. So when you see those rise, especially if you're a BPO agent, then you're going to see, you know, maybe that wave is starting to happen. But for now, it's not a big uh, piece of the market. Why do we like being friendly with the REO agents? Because generally they have something in pre-marketing uh, that's you know being trashed out or getting ready for the market that isn't an active listing. So you may have a match there. All now, right. now, but but yeah. let's drill down. So if you guys now this is something where the MLS will be useful. Go and find out who in again. It's not. It's going to be a little bit of a needle in the haystack at this point. But there are agents in your marketplace who have these relationships. Um, with some of the larger REO companies. Every single market, no matter how hot it is, and, and granted, if you're in the middle of the hottest market in the country, there's going to be maybe one and maybe two or 300 that are distressed. But in some of your markets, no matter how hot you think the market is, there are still REO inventory that's coming for sale. But what happens is a lot of these REO agents, they obviously double end it themselves or they sell it to, uh, or essentially through a buyer's agent who they have a relationship with. That's how we trained most of our um, REO agents back in the day to work. So they could have ultra short days in the market. What they would do is they would create a sort of a private list of the agents that they knew had the best, most you know ready, motivated, usually investor buyers. And when they had new inventory coming for sale, usually it was something, something as simple as a text would go out notifying everyone and telling them when to submit the offers by. And that's how they'd sell stuff super fast. Would never hit, would it hit the MLS after it was in contract. That type of thing is still going on. So make sure you guys are paying attention. That's exactly it. So next we have investors. Work with investors and run ads that say we pay cash for homes and or network with people already uh, running those ads. Those are usually smaller investors and they don't buy everything that they get called on, right? So these sorts of ads generate lots of motivated seller calls. They're trying to find out what price they might be able to get. So, you know, investors are always good to have in your back pocket for lots of different reasons for buying your own properties, but certainly for knowing about what's coming up. So how do you find investors? Well, you can go to meetup.com. There's lots of Facebook investor groups, lots of local investor groups. Um, so, you know, that's basically it. It's pretty simple. Well, okay. So let's, sorry about the cough. So let's drill down on that a little bit further. Um, you, again, Julie mentioned meetup.com. Julie uh, mentioned um, other investor groups, but I'll tell you where a lot of these guys hang out nowadays is Facebook. So go into Facebook and do some searches and look for investor groups. And when we sold real estate, I'll give you an example. We had a lot of investors and most of these investors would work essentially auton autonomously from us. In other words, I'll, you know, this was back before there was um, the internet. Okay. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And there this was is, a time, by the way, millennials, there was a time before the internet. That's right. There was a time before the internet. <laughs> back when a watch was, what? you know, a watch. <laughs> so <laughs> what we do is we had these investors and we'd order MLS books for them, believe it or not. And we'd leave those sitting in our real estate office oh. for them to swing by and pick up. And when they found something that they liked, they'd essentially go out there and see the properties themselves. They drive by them, walk around them, and they tell us which ones they wanted to buy, and that'd be that. 
Matter of fact, we had one guy who was a uh, active police officer who liked to do usually a flip every two months. He got a real estate license. We put him on our real estate team. We got him a super key and essentially just set it up so he can operate completely autonomously from us. And we did, he would you know, obviously transact through us and he would pay us the commission on the buyer side. And then when it went for sale, we'd get that listing too. So there's a lot of interesting opportunities if you cozy up to some of these investors, but you can find them on uh, the meetup groups. You can find them on Facebook. You can find them, sometimes you might find Find other agents actually who are the actual you know flippers and whatnot. And yes, you're wondering, well, why would they want to basically uh, you know tell you about the house and not try to double end it? Because maybe they don't even want to deal with anything other than getting the house flipped. Maybe they're not focused on um, you know obviously working with the, on the buyer side of the transaction. Just be creative. Everywhere around you is opportunity. Uh, Julie, next point. Next point is number 13, move up buyers. Why do we like them? Because they have homes to sell. So you're getting two, maybe three sides of a transaction. You can do uh, postcards, social media, ads, all your normal methods of marketing. But we're talking about move up buyers. Okay, so this is to advertise that type of home. And what I see, Tim, agents are getting crafty on this right now. I hear it in our premier coaching. They're partnering with builders, not even necessarily having the listing of the builder, but getting permission to advertise a move up type of home, which will create action for the builder, action for the agent and resale listings. So you can do that as long as you have permission. So uh, you can also borrow listings from other agents. You can co-list, you can do things like this, but the bottom line is you want that phone call. Well, here, this is an interesting side note. The number one agent in the, in the entire United States is a broker. I should have said number one broker in terms of transactional volume. Not, I mean, he's he's not like bigger than EXP or something like that, but you get the idea of it. I think he considers himself a team or maybe he considers himself, he always is making the top of the list. I think he's in Houston and the way he goes about doing it, I've interviewed him, now this was years ago, but the way he does it basically is he created a website and the website allows broker builders to put their inventory on there for free and then he just basically peels off all the buyer leads and usually depending on the price point of the house they are calling on, a lot of those buyers are going to have houses to sell. You guys get it? It's really smart. Yeah, which is really smart. Yeah. So the builders go to him, they list their properties on him on his you know website for free, and he basically has created a nice little lead attraction funnel for himself that is uh, replenishing on a regular basis. <laughs> well, I used to love that you know we would sell buyer side you know new construction to buyers, surely from a transactional standpoint because your inspections aren't a nightmare because you know it's a pretty easy process and because you have the new build rep or the builder who is basically doing most of the transaction, so it's good in so many ways. And then a couple years later, assuming you keep in touch with them, that's going to be a beautiful new listing for you. All right. So next up, we have uh, call capture technology. And I don't know if you want to talk about slick text as well, but certainly 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE in your normal methods of advertising. Again, paper, postcards, door hangers, social media. Um, this works, works best with wanted ads, free CMA offers, pre foreclosure prospects. You know, you can, because 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE, and that's .com, using the numbers 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM, just like it sounds, because that's so inexpensive, you can use it in lots and lots of different ways. We've been talking about new construction. You can have an ad in your local paper in the housing section that says you are a new construction specialist. Find out who's building what, where, and who's got the perks. Now you're getting a whole lot of lead flow out of that. You can use that, of course, on your real estate signs and everything else that you're doing. We're just trying to generate more listing leads for you. Back to you, Tim. I'm actually reminding myself with this. Julie and I own half of 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM, and I didn't even remember the monthly price. All right, so it's, it's $37. So let's drill down more on how that actually yeah, works. I mean, it's outrageously inexpensive it for is. what you get. I Are, think we're basically giving them the wholesale price for that. No, it's $37. Bucks. I, I, and I, I'm saying there's other companies that are so much more. Oh, right. Yeah. It's $37 and it's uh, 30 days for free. So here's basically the way 800 Home Hotline and would work. And this Julie described it. But I'm going to give you some real world examples from when we sold real estate. So there's this technology, this IVR technology has been around forever. And it's even been around in you know sales roles like it is here forever as well. But it's always been more expensive. When Julie and I had... Um, I don't even remember the name of the company. I think it was Arch Telecom. We used yeah. to pay like eight hundred or a thousand or twelve hundred bucks a month, but it was it was worth it even then. An eight hundred home hotline dot com mm -hmm. is only thirty seven. So real world scenario. Um, let me pick a really juicy one. Okay, here's a really juicy one. I remember standing in the kitchen of our house in New Albany. 
um, and 7334 Berkeley Square. Okay. And I remember standing in the kitchen at a probably 7.30 or 8 o'clock, and I get a text from somebody, and I knew the text, and, I'll, and again, I'll tell you guys how this is all working uh, in a second from a back-end perspective, but the text was on a relatively expensive, I think it was 800 or 900 or I don't remember, $1,000 house that we just listed, and it was like 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night. Now, um, you know, obviously I call the guy right back and the guy turns out he's, um, the president and CEO, um, I think it was a power company. I don't remember what, not only was this guy, he was, he was actually not, he was looking for himself, but he was also looking because he was bringing a whole bunch of executives in. So we called him back right away. I called him back right away. And this is what I said, you know, ring, ring. He said, hello. And I said, hey, this is Tim Harris with, you know, ABC Realty. As a courtesy, when people call our 800 number, we like to give him a quick call back to see if there are any questions about the home they called about. And he was, as they will almost always are, flabbergasted, <laughs> impressed, amazed that we called back right away. And by right away, I mean that text comes in and then you call them back like immediately. Whatever you're doing, assuming you're not asleep, you call them back urgently and people are just floored. It's what we call furiously fast lead follow up. So we called him back and then we had the, you know, he didn't end up buying that house. I think he actually ended up buying something for more than the, what the house was he was calling on. And then he sent us all these, um, you know, other executives that he was working with. And the next thing you know, it was like, I don't even remember, remember how much. That. In, that was like the golden call. It was. And then, but and then there was. That wasn't the only one. There were so many like that. There was another one. I remember we got another, as I'm just, you know, thinking out loud here, we had another one. An, this one was relocating. The guy was calling from either our website or something, and he, uh, again, called the 800 homehotlinecom I called him back right away, and, and he was an executive at Rolls-Royce. And Rolls-Royce, in case you guys don't know, it also makes jet engines, located in, what was that little town that was east of New Albany? Granville. Granville, right. Yeah, I remember that. And, so, and he, too, was looking for a really nice house, and he ended up buying a really great house right in New Albany Country Club. But then he also had all these executives that he was bringing in because they were expanding that particular business. And guess what? Next thing you know, that it resulted in more transactions as well. So this is all from basically 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM, and that costs $37. Now, it works when you have listings. So what, you know, it also works if you don't have listings. With permission, you can obviously advertise other agents' listings. You can get leads into your 800 home hotline system by running ads, you know, basically saying for 24 hour recorded info on this house, call 1-800, you know, and whatever your 800 number is, and you'll have a unique 800 number. And you put the sign writer on your signs, you put it everywhere. That's gonna be the main uh, way you want people to reach you. And this is the reason it works. And this, you know, you could argue 800homehotline.com also has an SMS feature as well, which frankly I don't like as much as the call-in feature because the SMS feature just, you know, texts them back a virtual brochure. I like the idea that they're going to call in and listen to a recording of your voice and you're following up with the call. That really impresses them. The SMS thing is a little less personal, but whichever way you guys want to go. The reason it works is because anytime you call a number where the person you're calling is paying for the call, right? 800 number, to, you know, all these different toll-free numbers, they, uh, you can't block that number. So you can be calling from a blocked cell phone and the person that you're calling is still going to get that number. And the way 800homehotline.com works is that as soon as they call, you get, you know, they call about one of your ads or off one of your signs or an internet, just wherever. Then you call them urgently back and then you basically, we give you a whole script with this, but the gist of it is here, I'll, I'll run you guys through the script. So, you know, I called them back. You know, um, as a courtesy, when people call our 800 number, we like to give them a quick call back, see if you have any questions about the home they called about. And then he's going to say, well, and, and on the recording, we only gave an overview of the house. The recording was, hi, this is, you know, you're calling about 123 uh, Elm Street. It's a great three bedroom, two and a half bath home. It's got a newly remodeled this, a newly remodeled that, private backyard. The, the current offering price is in the mid 700s, right? You're never giving an exact price. Because if you do, then you're going to have to, every time you adjust the price, because you are going to be having to adjust prices, guys, in this new market, you're going to have to then redo the recording. So you want to basically price it in the low 700s, the mid 700s, or the upper 700s, adjust accordingly. So they then will say, well, is the house still available? Where's the current asking price? And this is what you say. That's a great property. Everybody's calling on that one, it seems. Let me check to make sure it's still available. Now, listen, listeners, are you listening to what I'm about to say? Oh, by the way, which house in the neighborhood are you thinking about selling? Now, I haven't yet told him what the price was or whether it's still for sale, and I went right to finding out if he has a house to sell. 
that is an incredibly powerful way of picking off tons of listing leads. Because what you'll find, depending on the price point of what they're calling about, you'll find that 50%, 60% have houses to sell. And sometimes they're neighbors. And if it's a brand new listing and you just put the 800 home hotline rider on the sign, those are all neighbors price checking. And the ones that are going to call first are the ones that are actually the most uh, motivated because maybe they're thinking about selling them their own homes. I'll give you another little secret here. The way, the reason this, there's many, many reasons why this is so powerful, but the best buyers always call off signs. The crappiest buyers are internet buyers because what happens is people start on the internet and they drill down and they end up driving neighborhoods and that's where they start focusing in on the specific, you know, whatever they want. That This neighborhood, that neighborhood, this side of the street, this, you know, close, this, that, you guys get the idea. So that's what the Sunday drive rounds are all about. And when they come across your 800 home hotline sign writer, they're calling, they're probably not uh, attached to an agent yet. You then obviously call them right back and you can have them work for you. Okay, that's the reason it works for great motivated, the best buyers. But the reason it works for sellers or neighbors is because obviously they're wanting to not have a, you know, maybe a sales conversation with anybody. They're just gathering information about what other homes are listed for. And then you can then pick off the listing leads oftentimes before they even, you know, start to think about interviewing agents. That's what we did. And this is how if every single coaching client that comes to us, we tell them to employ this exact technology because it's massively affordable. Everyone can afford it. And because it's incredibly powerful and there's no, there's not a lot of moving parts to make this work. Um, there's so many other powerful ways you can use this. Imagine if you're in a listing appointment and you are essentially showing the seller that you are the very living you know, personification of furiously fast lead follow-up and you demonstrate in front of them the 800 home hotline system working. Imagine pulling out you know, a mocked up home brochure of their house or you could just even take a sign writer with you, which we sometimes did, and then have the seller with their cell phone sit there and call and get information about the house and show them essentially how the whole system works right in front of them. And by the way, they probably called you in the first place through your 800 home hotline number anyway, so they already know how it works from a, in your, a consumer's perspective. But now you're showing it how it works from a perspective of a potential seller. Guys, that's incredibly powerful. That usually, that one little thing, when you do it with a little bit of, um, you know, if you do it with a little bit of style, you'll find that most sellers will find it does not matter what the other agents bring with them as it's far as the end for them. It's the end, right? That's what I'm trying they to say politely. Up. They just give up. Yeah, they but do. You know what, Tim? I also like 1 800 Home Hotline because it's so versatile. So you could be an agent with absolutely zero listing inventory right now, and you can still do some kind of a promotion. There's so many of them that are possible to make your phone ring and get listing leads and to find things for your buyers. So there's just so many uses of it. I love how inexpensive it is. So um, yeah, I mean, we we have actually done entire podcasts about 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE before. Well, it's because it made um, it so, uh, the similar technology back in the day for us, it made, us, it made us millions of dollars. Absolutely, it did. I mean, it was so, especially in the beginning, people thought it was illegal. It was so yeah, good. they did. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I it, remember that. I, I remember when, uh, do you remember they were not Hungarian, Bulgarian, something like that. <laughs> Our neighbors on the I corner do. of Berkeley Square yep. where the other agents Hungarian. had blown them off. Well, because the house had been listed two or three yes, times. That's right. But we still got the job done for them. And I think okay, that was the 800 a, number conversion. I think it, it was. was. But yeah. that, okay, there's a good story too. Yeah. All right, so this house had been listed two or three times. It's before Julie and I moved there. We moved to this little neighborhood. And then we get to know the neighbors and they moved back to Hungary, by the way. And um, the house basically wasn't getting shown by anybody. And we went through it and the walls were perfect. The carpet was perfect. Everything was, you nice know, house. but the other agents who were kind of, you know, pinheads weren't showing it at all because they had essentially written it off or thought it was, you know, what it was maybe two or three years prior. So they just stopped showing it. Um, so Julie and I, what we did is we put the 800 home hotline rider once we got the listing on our sign. And then one day we get a call. And this is basically exactly how the call went. Um, you know, it was some, uh, another agent's buyer, which was fine. I'm still going to do the best job I can trying to sell my listing. And I answered all the questions. And, she's, and, I, and she basically told me what she was looking for. And I, essentially what I was describing is that house. And that's exactly what she was looking for. Mm -hmm. Like 
you know, and then she said to me, I wonder why my agent hadn't shown it. Or no, no, she didn't say that. She said, my agent didn't show it to me because he said it was in really bad condition. I remember who yeah. it was too. Yeah. His, the know. agent's initials were TT. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, who still sells real estate there. I know. And, and I said, well, let me just, you know, you can have your agent pop by if you'd like, or I'm, you know, we just live right basically in the backyard. So you can swing by and I'll show it to you and you can decide whether it's a fit for you. And if you want to buy it, just have your agent make an offer. Mm-hmm. She comes by. I show it. She wants to buy it. And then the call I got after that was hilarious because here's this agent who basically had done his best job not to show it, um, who just had filled her head with a bunch of who knows what. And then Julie and I ended up selling selling it. You know, there was still a co-op. It didn't really matter at the end of the day, right? No, we wanted to make our sellers happy. And they were the nicest people, too. I totally remember them. Yeah, they do. And I, I hope, I wonder what ever happened to them. I don't know. Do you remember their last name? It was I, something. I will at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Exactly, yeah. when we're defragging. No, we'll remember it on yeah. Sunday when we're Sunday talking about aliens, out. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so guys, look, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. That's our list. I mean, we have so many stories. And Coach Rochelle does as well. I mean, she made lots of money off of that, too. Be creative, so. be urgent, and mm-hmm. don't just wait around for stuff to pop up in the MOS. Are you done with your points? Uh, one more. And we always recommend that all of you become BPO agents, broker price opinions. They're a gold mine. Now, there is a rule in place that when you do a BPO, broker price opinion, for the company who's hired you to do it, you are not allowed to directly solicit the owners of that house. Now, that all is true, and you absolutely shouldn't do that, especially at the time of the BPO. But when you're doing lots of them and they age out after a while, you can certainly door knock that street. And you need to drill down on that more so they understand. You know, agent. So BPOs, we've talked about that a little bit before, but broker price opinions are basically a fancy CMA. It's somewhere between a CMA and an appraisal. And there's lots of different entities that pay you to do that, usually between 50 and 75 bucks. We teach a class as part of Premier Coaching called BPO uh, Cash Flow which shows you how to make a minimum of $5,000 a month, I mean, like clockwork, doing BPOs. Now, you're probably used to doing CMAs for free all day long. You probably offer those to your past clients. This is a way for you to actually get paid for that. Now, why are BPOs ordered? There's lots of different reasons. It can be, I, we're seeing some because of the forbearances right now. Banks are checking what's going on, so we have a little mini wave of BPOs on that. Um, sometimes people have just stopped making their payment. Sometimes there's a divorce decree, a refinance. There's lots of different reasons. But by watching what's happening in the BPO world, you can see what kind of inventory is coming. And you can also sometimes figure out what you know what's happening in that neighborhood and sometimes prospect that. For example, just to really drill down, if someone's credit drops, believe it or not, oftentimes the bank, their mortgage company will know about it and they'll order a BPO just to see what's going on with the property. Yep. There, the BPOs are ordered constantly. Now, obviously, some states have a little bit more restrictive rules with regards to agents doing BPOs if they don't have a, an appraiser's license, but that's something you guys can get pretty, you know, it's... I think appraiser's license is probably easier to get than a real estate license. It depends on the state. Some states make you be an appraisal, uh, an apprentice appraiser first and get so many hours and then you're turned loose. But, you know, I, I think it's really super beneficial for you to at least be a BPO agent. If not, go ahead and get your appraiser's license. There's only two or three states that restrict agents doing BPOs, right? Yes, that's right. Connecticut's one of them. Uh, I want to say West Virginia, but I'd have to double check. Almost everybody can do BPOs. Um, so, and you know, and even if you're somebody who's a grizzled veteran, you're slammed, you've got tons of business, you don't have time to do BPOs, you should be friends with somebody who is so that you can have access to what's going on in that world. Along those lines, if you have a staff of any, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter, 10 people, one person, you should seriously consider getting them to do BPOs so that they can at least cover their cost. You could have them do a certain number of BPOs per day, and BPO, when you get efficient at it, doesn't take very long. Well, and, it makes them a lot more valuable to your team. Right, and they're, you're not having to, you know, use commission dollars to pay them. They're essentially paying their way, own way by doing BPOs. Mm-hmm. One of the things, you know, we always suggest to all of our coaching clients, when you are in troubling times, like what we are in and going in, you definitely don't want to have any boat, you know, people riding in your boat. Everyone in your mm-hmm. boat has to be a rower. So no riders, only rowers. And if they can't substantiate through actual, you know, return yeah. on investment, it's not like, oh, that they made that customer happy. No, they have to do, you know, 
Buy earn their BP, keep, basically. Earn their keep, yeah, quite literally. Yeah. You know, it's simple. It's not, and you can, um, as far as the BPO business, that is, as Julie was expressing, and she didn't drill down as much as we do in the Premier Coaching Program, but that is a gateway uh, for getting REOs. Every single one of you who want to be ahead of the curve for the REO wave that probably is going to happen next year, you better start doing BPOs because a lot of the BPOs, um, I mean, I forget. In an average foreclosure, the average um, there's like something. Do you remember the exact number? Twenty or thirty yeah, different yeah, BPOs only, ordered. I think it's about twenty BPOs through the process. Yeah. If you look at from the first time they miss the first payment until it finally sells and closes. So yeah, I mean, it's great cash flow. It's a great education. I really think if I was everybody's broker, I wouldn't let anybody go on a listing appointment until they'd done like a hundred BPOs. Because what business do you have to price anything if you haven't done that? And you might as well get paid to learn. Earn while you learn. Amen. So there you go. All right. The last one is property tax reassessments. And this is one of the things that we are seeing. People are, are kind of using this as an excuse plus the coronavirus to maybe sell their more expensive house with really expensive property taxes, downsize, or go out into the country and spend less money. So property tax reassessments, all of it's being raised all of the time. I don't think I have any single case of that's property gonna, tax going down. That's it's good. always going up. Property taxes are going to be the biggest threat to, um, you know, essentially the viability of uh, the housing market really, really coming back on strong. Because right now we're living in what's going to be the waning years or really months of low property taxes. And Julie and I used to live in Texas. And in Texas, what was our property taxes? It was over 2%, 2 point, wasn't it? 2 point something, yeah. Yeah, and that wasn't even the most expensive in central I know. Texas. I know. Or bad. southern Texas, well, really. There's, there's places like Chicago is really super high. A lot of the Northeast is super high. Yep. And, and, and getting higher. So this so, is a good excuse. So what do you do? You offer to do a real CMA. And every one of you should know how to, quote, fight the property tax reassessment. When you go to the treasurer's website or whoever is in charge, they're called different things in different states, but essentially it's your treasurer's website. They usually have an FAQ about what to do when you disagree with the, their appraised value. So that's something everybody's wondering all the time. You know, I call my database. I've got to have something of value. This is something of value. Help them with it. And usually the result is, you know what? Even if you got it down by, you know, a couple hundred bucks a year, I still don't want to pay that. It can help me sell the house. Well, we, um, there was a number of people during the last downturn who took our BPO uh, cash flow widget that was part of our coaching program and they made a, essentially a reassessment business, right? So they would advertise their marketplace that they'll help to, you know, essentially walk the people through and how to get their property taxes lowered. And oftentimes what it requires is you have to fill out a form, duh, and you have to submit it to your local treasurer's office along with a, some sort of CMA or whatnot, mm -hmm. you know, showing that the values essentially have been over assessed and, and then they need to adjust. Almost always, the property taxes will then be adjusted down. And by the way, all of you guys should be considering doing this yourselves. Um, and then I think what they did is that they would be, um, I, don't, I forget how, it was a lady I remember who was doing a lot of this. She mm -hmm. built a, hundreds of like three, four hundred thousand dollars a year doing this. Mm -hmm. I forget how she charged it. I think she charged a percent of the amount of money that she was able to save right. them. Yeah, something like that. But again, this is a I, again, this is an idea Julie and I did when we were uh, selling real estate in this, it, it, especially in New Albany, in New Albany Country Club area. The property taxes were a ton, um, and every we, every year the taxes got reassessed. And property taxes go primarily to pay for schools. That's at least what we're told they go for. In different cities and states, they go to pay for other things too. So the property taxes would always go up like clockwork, no matter whether the houses were selling for more or not. And when we started selling in, in New Albany, the prices stopped appreciating. They sort of leveled off and started to fall. And yet the property yeah, taxes... They don't just automatically readjust you down, though, strangely enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we used to... We, we put together... It wasn't really an info product, but we put together a package of information that walked somebody through how to go about having their taxes yeah. reassessed. And then we would, you know basically mail out to all the people that lived in this particular geographic area, usually 90, 120 days prior to the assessment, reassessment happening. Uh, everyone was paying attention to basically what their property taxes were. That was an omnipresent conversation, that and the OSU Buckeyes. And um, yeah, that was something that we got wow. listings from it because people really appreciated it. We made friends and had contacts and we expanded our reach just because they saw we were essentially trying to help them save some money. And this is an aside, um, but is if assuming that people then are now realizing that they can have their kids go to online schools 
And assuming that people continue the trend of moving away from these densely populated high pro property tax you know, areas, you're going to see these cities um, who have been reliant on these property taxes to pay for the schools raise taxes. They're not going to lower taxes because they still have all the fixed costs. And now they have fewer people to share the cost with. So well, you're, and the costs are going up too because don't forget all the schools are having to retrofit for all the uh, COVID restrictions. Right. I know that Zoe School sent an email saying that they've already spent more than 400000 in, uh, you know, upgrades and changes and you know, all the stuff they have to do. And that's certainly not the biggest school around. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're definitely going to raise taxes for it. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, well, raise taxes, but in our case, raise our, you know, fees. Yes. Well, so these are the ideas that we have given to you guys. Hopefully, if nothing else, you're realizing that inventory is all around you. You just basically have to get off your duff, make some effort. Uh, don't just be solely reliant on the MLS. And you guys know, yes. frankly, in the era of Zillow and the sort of, you know, the competitive nature with buyer's agents and listing agents and all this, yeah. you know, Mickey Mouse that's happened with regards to, you know, pocket listings and coming soons and just all this stuff. You guys know as well as I do that listing agents have gotten incredibly efficient at essentially finding um, groups of motivated buyers so they can, yes, put the houses for sale and follow the rules of their local MLSs, but at the same time, most likely double ended themselves because they've already peeled away some of the best, most motivated buyers in a particular area. Maybe those buyers are actually uh, sellers, houses that they have listed. Mm -hmm. So being the listing agent at the end of the day is the ultimate hack to anything right. that ails you in real estate. That will always be true. No matter what happens to interest rates or commission rates or who the president is or you know, doesn't matter what's happening. Listing agents will always be the ones that sleep the best at night mm -hmm. because they have the control of the inventory. And frankly, then with enough listings, in some cases it might be five or 10, you have very consistent cash flow. That's what our coaching business is all about. That's what our coaching business will always be about, helping you guys see the liberation that comes from basically being a listing agent. If you want to last in real estate, you have to be a listing agent. That saying has been around forever. And it always will be around. No matter what technology and innovations come, you know, Inman News is going to talk about all these great, wonderful things that are happening. And, you know, agents are going to be, you know, more agents are going to, whatever, it does not matter. The big rock is coming to be the extinction of the current real estate model from, you know, some far away, you know, whatever. All these sorts of hypey headlines are irrelevant to you if you're a listing agent. The listing agent into the business will be the one thing that will never be replaced with technology because sellers will always want the skills and of a caring, competent listing agent. There's no technological innovation that's going to replace the nuanced knowledge of what it takes to be successful marketing a house. And in a changing market, or let alone a buyer's market, that's even more true because you're going to have sellers that have a, such complex issues that you're going to have to help solve. Technologists will not be able to compete with you provided you have the skill set. And that's what we're all, all about. Look, guys, the easy button to get started with us is just join the free coaching program. Text the word SURVIVAL to 31996. By the way, we're also going to call you once you join and offer you a free coaching call with one of our new member coaches. Make sure you take full advantage of that. So listen, guys, um, make sure you're listening to our Sunday podcast. Um, we've been getting a lot of really great feedback on the podcast um, in general, but the ones on Sunday, I'm actually surprised how many of you guys react um, we talk about all kinds of loopy things, but it's fun. It's our it's our day to decompress. It's our day to sort of like, you know, let the stress from the previous week, you know, seep out of us as we sort of just make fun of things in general and have fun with the craziest headlines. Julie, what kind of crazy headlines do I have I been sending that I know you're looking <laughs> cool. forward to? Well, uh, there's been lots of good alien stuff lately. Oh, there you go. Um, alien stuff. There's been a lot of uh, strange things about what's happening in Seattle. Uh, what else? Oh, I'll tell you the one I'm looking forward to telling these guys about. The, um, the satellites. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, this was crazy but true. Mm -hmm. Julie and I were just last Sunday talking about how we saw 5G in, uh, we didn't say satellites, but we said 5G was going to bring on the biggest uh, revolution for just everything. Essentially, it's going to change the way everything works. Yep. That's the reason people are so scared of it, especially businesses that realize that they're going to be obsoleted. I mean, so we talked about that a lot on Sunday. So make sure you're researching that yourself. But what's really fascinating is now that I realize Elon Musk 
in us were sharing the same wavelength. He had been secretly launching satellites and has created a net of small satellites all around planet Earth. So Elon's not waiting for 5G towers to be installed. Elon's launching satellites that essentially are going to, there it is, that's the article. Starlink. Starlink, yeah. yeah. So share that with them on Sunday. Yes, but th- let's save this one up. Yeah, we'll read this to you guys on yeah. Sunday and talk about it. But that is going to change everything. If you're not convinced that everything's going to be done virtually and online, wait till you hear this story. Or you can just Google it if you don't want to wait. It's yeah. called Starlink. Amazing. And this is going to be the, so this cool. is truly going to, uh, you think Netflix is cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, you think EXP Realty is cool and all these things are cool. Just wait to see what's going to come with this, uh, the wave of technology that's going to evolve just because finally all over planet earth, high speed internet is going to have arrived on anyone's mobile device. You're going to see people that are going to start evolving to start using like really 3d sort of uh, headsets. You're going to see somebody wearing a headset sitting in a restaurant and really what they're doing is they're taking a private tour of an I- you know of the Eiffel Tower or they're and it's totally immersive. This is the type of technology that can only come from a really high speed internet and it's coming now, not in the future. This is not George Jetson here. And it, it is possible to be literally all over the world. They were using yep. examples of being, you know, in the middle of Uganda watching Netflix. Right. Well, this is the reason that EXP Realty, one of the many reasons EXP Realty excites me so much, because EXP Realty is going to be a global company. And EXP Realty is going to be essentially, you're going to be able to sit in, you know, or your villa in Puerto Rico, and you're going to be able to look at houses, essentially have an immersive experience. Uh, anywhere on the on the planet you're gonna be able to look at a you know a teepee and wherever a teepee is or you know you're gonna be able to walk through a mansion in, in Florence all those experiences are gonna happen in real time you can connect with an agent the agent will do a virtual walkthrough or the agent will do the walkthrough and then basically you then can essentially watch the replay of that agent's experience who knows I don't even know I'm not a technologist but the stuff that's coming is truly going to revolutionize how we interact with consumers that should excite you provided you're ahead of that technology and that's what we're gonna always do as part of our coaching program we're gonna let you guys know how to make money now being of service to people in the present but we're also going to prepare you for the future. Don't worry about what's coming next, guys. Caring, competent, and skilled agents will always be needed. It does not matter what happens. You will always be in the driver's seat provided you are focused on primarily being a listing agent. Don't walk away from your great buyer opportunities, obviously, but do know that your freedom is going to come on the other side of accepting the fact that your highest and truest purpose on this planet is to be of service to others. And as long as you're a listing agent in real estate, you have all green lights. In the meantime, if you guys need us for anything, You can always text me, which is 512-758-0206. You guys have a fantastic day, and we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time... Thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.